regional finals are about to start and all of the teams are trying to qualify not only for pgs 5 and 6 but especially for pgc because the format is so complicated and a little bit hard to grasp i thought i'd make a video again explaining it and also calculating what the odds are for every team making it to pgc depending on how they play in this last regional final I'm going to explain the format for everybody to know what's going on. Then we're going to look at what placement each team needs in their regional final to make it to PGC. And then we'll talk a little bit about the conflicts that arise from such a complicated system. Let's go through the basics first. There is 24 teams going to PGC. Those are split up amongst multiple regions, including a wildcard slot for Malaysia and eight PGS point slots. So every region has PGC point slots, which is the points that you get in your own region. But also there is eight slots for the PGS points given away through PGS 3, 4, 5, and 6. So essentially there is teams who do well internationally who will go to PGC. And then there is teams who do well regionally who will go to PGC. What goes first is PGS. For example, a Sonics or a Twisted Minds who are essentially qualified through PGS points already do not have to qualify through PGC points anymore. And if they qualify through PGC points, their slot will just be passed on to a team below them. That seems like a small detail, but it matters massively. Because in some regions, like Americas for example, that could change it from the top two going to PGC to the top four. Similar things is true for Europe. Right now we have three teams in the top eight PGS points, which would mean that we are sending the top six of uh, the region to PGC. So we are going to play PEC Fall or PAS2 or whatever regional tournament. And we're going to look at the PGC points. And then we're still not going to know who qualifies to PGC until PGS 5 and 6 are played. But what I can do now is I can calculate the odds of teams qualifying and I can calculate them based off the cutoff. I can say, okay, what is the odds of phase qualifying if you need top four in Europe? What are the odds of phase qualifying if you need top five from Europe, et cetera, et cetera. And that's what I've done in this video. I've calculated all the outcomes for PEC fall using a piece of software of mine. I'm not going to explain quickly how it works. If you do not want to watch that, if you do not care, you can just skip to the next timestamp. You'll be fine. I've written a piece of software that essentially calculates all the possible outcomes for PEC fall um, and that then assigns each team a probability to make it to PC depending on where they finish. So it will calculate what are the chances for foot esports to make it if they're fourth? What are the chances to make it if they're fifth? What are the chances to make it if they're sixth? And so forth and so forth. I can then shift the cutoff. I can shift the cutoff from fourth to fifth to sixth, for example, for Europe. Um, and it will spit out different probabilities to be in that cutoff. Now there's one weakness to the program here, which is it just assumes that placement in each tournament is random it will simulate a ton of runs, a 5 million runs to be exact. So if 5 million times, it will give each final team a random placement. That is obviously not super accurate. Twisted Minds is not as likely to win PEC Fall as Stardust is, right? That's just not how it works. But there's no better way to do it, in my opinion. Um, I've, I've thought about sort of giving teams a skill ranking or whatever, but if you've looked at past performances, it doesn't make sense. There's not a lot of data to go off. Teams change rapidly. A lot of these teams haven't played all regional events this year. Major teams like Twisted Minds, for example, they do really, really well at PGS4 in three. Um, they don't even make the finals at EWC. Navi gets 16th in Europe in PCS7 and then they win the world championship. You can't really predict how PUBG teams are going to do. So this is the best I can do. Random simulations, but then I take a lot of the randomness out by saying, okay, if everybody else is random, but you get fourth place, these are your chances. Let me quickly explain how this graph works. In the top row, you see the placement the team gets in PEC fall. And in the cells below it, you see their odds of making it to PGC through PGC points. Okay, let's have a look at the possibilities. If there's four slots in Europe, which would mean only Twisted Minds qualify through PGS points, you'll see that, for example, FaZe Clan, they would need something like a top 10 to guarantee themselves, while a VP would be qualified with a top six. And then you'd see it falls off very sharply towards Navi, G Gleaming Gladiators, BB, and so forth. We essentially have to finish in a top two or top three to really have good chances to make it to PGC. 
Once you're looking at five slots, so for example, Twist and Phase going through PGS points, it becomes a lot easier for the middle pack teams and it shifts there quite a bit. For example, Navi would be okay with just a top five, um, while a team like Eternal Fire could maybe get away with a fourth place. So the odds shift quite a bit. Keep an eye on Foot, for example. They now have a 72% chance with second place, which was 28% uh, calculated by the software with only four slots. So teams around that middle cutoff, they're most affected by this. Once you're looking at six slots, which is the scenario we would currently be in for PGS points, uh, it becomes even easier for the top. The mid pack moves further as well, of course, and it starts getting a little bit more likely for teams like BBL um, to actually qualify to PGC. Foot, for example, 72% with a five team cutoff have now moved on to basically guaranteeing themselves with the second place. The same story continues if we would have four teams qualifying through PGS points. That is very optimistic. That is the big copium scenario. And that's somehow still not enough for the zero point teams. They still have to win PEC fall to qualify. Why is that? Because the fall off from first to second in PGC points is so massive that a second place in PEC fall alone doesn't really mean anything. If you start looking at NA, the story is Falcons with a big lead in PGC points right now. So they are almost qualified already, even with just the, the natural two slots. And then you have TSM with good chances and Sonics with good chances. That's extremely unlikely though. Sonics is almost qualified through PGS points already. So they most likely will qualify through that avenue and they will give three slots to the region which makes this whole graph a lot more green, which makes it a whole lot more doable for a lot of teams to qualify, especially TSM with a top five now are looking really good. Luna Galaxy, they could maybe get away with a third place and then a few teams towards the bottom, they need to win the tournament. Same thing with four slots, so that would be two additional slots through PGS teams. The mid pack benefits massively. Teams like Luna Galaxy or Legacy have their odds shifted quite a bit, but there still is teams towards the bottom who wouldn't even qualify even if they won the last event. And same story here as well. The cut, the fall off from first to second is so big, a lot of teams can only qualify by winning. Okay, that was a lot of data to go through. Keep in mind, none of this is fact. This is all based on random simulations. Random simulations do not really do the skill of PUBG teams justice, but I thought it'd give you a bit of an idea of what teams need and also it will give you a bit of an idea of how impactful these pgs slots will be once they are determined hope you guys enjoyed the video uh, a lot of work goes into the coding there behind all those numbers so if you guys want to support there's always my credit code that's absolutely free and i'll see you again in the next video